LX277 a customer brought in says that it bogs down when the grass is too high. Uh, started taking a look at it here, got it up top. Show one real quick telltale sign of what exactly is going on with this thing. So we're going to go ahead and take the hood off here. And we'll show you what we got going on. Kind of one of the more common issues no matter what brand, maker, model. All right. So, one of the telltale signs I see right here off the bat, any kind of foam, any kind of masks, any kind of buildup around the head here, it's instantly going to tell you, you probably got some sort of vermin in there. So mice, uh, rats, uh, chipmunks, you know, depending on the, on the situation or where you're at. I mean, you can get pretty much anything up on the heads of these units, uh, sometimes up on the transmissions of the units, but they love that wiring in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start taking this apart here, figure out exactly what's going on because right now, it sounds like while you're running it that it's running on one cylinder. So I haven't checked it out quite yet, but we can do that here real quick before we pull it all apart. So we take the left cylinder wire off, spark plug wire off, engine dies. That means that the right cylinder is not continuing to run the engine by itself. <laughs> spark plug off there no change so what's that's telling me right here off the bat is that this cylinder is doing all the work we're running just basically on that one cylinder on the other side so we take this all apart what I'd expect to kind of see on the inside once we get down there to it is some sort of chewing from the mice either it's either it's through the kill wire and the kill wire is touching somewhere or it's through the wire itself for the spark plug so Again, very common issue. I mean, we see it at least two or three times a week most of the time. out the 10 millimeter bolts around the housing and everything here Get these things all taken out let's drop my little Should give us pretty well good access there I'm also going to down here at the bottom take off the front plate here in a minute open up this top here real quick and doesn't look like there's a whole lot up under the bottom here or anything no oil buildup or anything like that but we do have over here a nice nest of some sort looks like maybe a mouse or something like that oh and look at that when I oh it looks like somebody's already tried to repair this I guess at one point apparently maybe the mi mice were in here one other time or somebody tried to repair it there's tape on the end of it 
some sort of repairs here with some some more tape apparently the like the mice like this uh tractor here so that's his meal when he's up in there uh looks like it's just the kill wire here that they chewed but then they chewed also the wire for the actual coil so we're gonna have to replace the coil on this unit let's see the other one here Now the other one looks pretty good, so you'll want to make sure with any of these, if the wires are chewed through at all, you're going to want to replace that wire. So on this one, we'll replace the wiring harness between the coils. You Sometimes they have like a resistor in between the two. Um, I don't think this one does, but sometimes they have that resistor. And from there, what you can do is you can... Um, it just keeps the... When you ground out one, it keeps the other one from continuing to spark. It's basically a, uh, a one-way kill on those. So uh, replacing the coil here should get us back up and running. It doesn't look to me like anything else was damaged. Ground wire should come as part of the, as part of the harness here. So you do also want to look on these. I'm going to go ahead and take this front off, off real quick. But you do also want to look at any other wiring on the unit. So if they're hanging out there and they're hungry anytime during the winter and there's no food around that's the first thing they'll go do is chew some other wiring so if you fix all this up you may spend a bunch of money getting it done and then realize that there's a bunch of other electrical issues you didn't even know about so, so we've got the cover off here doesn't look like they made a ton up here right on top of the muffler or anything like that but definitely want to get all this stuff out of here number one it could definitely start a fire number two you want to make sure there's no mice or anything still in it you know causing you issues still so make sure you get all that stuff out of there vacate them out of that area get a new coil on this thing is what we're going to do then that wiring harness and that should take care of all all of the other issues again take a real close look at all the rest of your wiring in the thing you want to make sure that there's nothing chewed up here if there is you're going to want to get that addressed before you do anything so I mean, any chew marks anywhere, definitely address those issues. Do not let that go. Don't let bare wiring anywhere. You know, you can see they've been using this place as a home, so they've probably been in and out of this unit pretty well everywhere. So take a look at all the wiring really extensively, both behind here, just everywhere where there's wiring at. You know, those, those mice have been up in here or whatever have been up in here for a, for a pretty good long time, chewing on things probably during the winter, if I had to guess, but... It's hard to tell, you know, it could be something that's more current than that. Got a big wiring loom down here. Any other mower, kind of same thing, just take a look at the wiring. It doesn't really matter what brand, make, or model it is, you know. But if you're getting it bogged down like that, you're, you, you could very well be running on one cylinder, you know. A lot of times people will bring it in and think they're having a carburetor issue or thinking they're having a this, this, or the other issue. And it ends up being... One of the cylinders isn't running, whether it be a coil, whether it be a valve, whether push rod, anything like that. But this is one of the most common ones, you know, vermin. Okay, so we went ahead and got a different harness put on this thing. We had one laying here since the other one was on back order for a couple weeks. Went ahead and put the new coil on here, got everything gapped, just a card in between it and the magnet. You can go ahead and push it against while you're holding that card in there, tighten it down. That'll give you your, your coil spacing there. So everything's hooked up. We hooked up at the bottom side here, just those two wires there, quick connects, and then one to the bottom of the solenoid on the carburetor here. We're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up and see how everything runs. side that we were testing before that obviously wasn't working because the coil wire was completely chewed so was the ground wire all back up and through i'm honestly kind of surprised that the thing ran at all at that point but so basically 
you know, mice got in here, chewed it all up, ruined all of his stuff. Make sure you get this all cleaned out, especially the cylinder head. You don't want any of these fins down in here, your cooling fins of the unit, to be packed full of stuff. You want to get those all clean of that grass and stuff. Otherwise, you'll get some overheating issues over time. So that's how you fix uh, an engine that's bogging down in high grass or that's not running right, not enough power. A lot of times it's just either a coil or a bad wiring issue caused from mice, rats, anything in that general nature. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.